Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own refrigerated food, uh, specifically for automatic feeding. If you haven't watched the video that shows you how to make the dosing part yet, go watch that now. This is uh, meant to show you how to make the food. So making your own food means that you don't need to use the pre-made foods that are available uh, commercially. Like uh, Reef Nutrition actually makes a, a really good product. I've used some of their products. Uh, and I think they're great. Uh, the only problem with them is, is that some of them cost as much as $70 a bottle. So I'm not willing to spend that much, so I, I make my own. I've been using uh, this homemade uh, food in a doser for over a year. And in the first eight months, I had really great luck with it. I had a tank crash due to other circumstances, mostly a uh, velvet outbreak uh, that came in on a frag. But other than that, uh, everything's been going really well with my tank. So you can start out with any frozen food or DIY food recipe, and any will work. I used uh, this one as a basis for this recipe, and I'll put a link down below. Um, but generally I put in uh, things like myasis uh, shrimp, baby shrimp, uh, pellet food, nori, scallops, mussels, cyclopses, spirulina powder, uh, silver sides, reef chili, uh, any of those microfoods, anything like that. Today I'm going to be using, let's see what we got here, or what my fish will be eating for the six months. We got some cooked baby clam meat, tasty, uh, some anchovy fish, some frozen crab with the shell included, some baby shrimp, and these are about the same size as my sister's shrimp. They're a teeny bit bigger, but not much. Uh, two pounds of that, and some, uh, what is this, silverfish. I don't know what silverfish is, but I generally just uh, shop at my local uh, Asian grocery store and just pull out whatever looks good. I also, for the vegetarians, in the group, I've got some fresh seaweed. I don't know what kind this is. Uh, I think these are kelp knots, so that's probably kelp. I don't know what that is. Um, and I also usually throw in uh, some uh, nori sheets. The only food I don't recommend is squid and octopus. Um, not only do my fish not really like it, but it's harder uh, to grind into uniform sizes and it tends to congeal when it gets mixed into these balls that clog the pump intake. So I just avoid those. Uh, it's totally not worth it. So initially I attempted to uh, make this food using a food processor and uh, it works and if that's the only tool you have, uh, go with it. But a uh, meat grinder is a much better tool uh, for this. So I use the uh, small grinding plate. I don't know what size these holes these are, but they look to be about an eighth of an inch. And I put it in the freezer just to, just to cool it down a little bit. Uh, all the food I've let sit in uh, lukewarm water for about 30 minutes. So it's still frozen, but it's not uh, so hard. It's not hard as a rock. Uh, you, can, you can pull it apart. So one thing uh, to make sure with the food grinders is don't put this uh, plate retention on so hard that you can't turn it by hand um, because that will cause a lot of friction and uh, friction will heat up the food and actually start to cook it. All right, so let's get started. So the smaller foods like baby shrimp, you don't actually have to grind up. Anything that will fit through the tube, don't worry about it. Just just put it in and you can see about the size of these these baby shrimp they're, they're pretty small just slightly larger than myasis shrimp all right but we're going to grind up uh, these anchovies so i've stuck them in the funnel we'll turn on our grinder and smush them in all right so the food that we're getting out of this is Something like this. It's in pretty small parts, and uh, even very small fish can eat this stuff. 
So I don't think you guys really need to see, watch me uh, grinding uh, seafood. So I'm gonna finish this, uh, grinding this up, and then we'll move on. So the seaweed goes in just like everything else. Uh, just a little harder to get it to, to go through, but just keep at it and it will go in. And you can see it gives you a pretty uh, nice consistency. Some of these strands are a little bit large, um, but it'll, it will go through the pump. And uh, those nori sheets, uh, you can just throw those in as well and they'll get ground through as well into nice sizes. All right, the last thing I'm gonna put through the grinder are these baby clams. They're just a little bit too large to go through unprocessed, so into the grinder they go. All right, so this is what we end up with. Let's see if we can see this a little bit better. So nice particle size. Uh, the fish can eat this stuff really easily, um, but you know there's there's a variety of particle size. Some for bigger fish and uh, some for smaller fish, and some down to the size where only really the corals are going to get it. So all in all, good food. Um, I personally usually add uh, the dry ingredients. I do usually add some pellet food, and. Um, you know, something like uh, reef roids or something like that, reef chili, any of those, uh, right beforehand, and I kind of base that just on what my tank is doing. Uh, so you don't have to make that choice uh, right away. So this food takes me about half an hour to make, and it lasts me a couple months. I probably got mm, six pounds, maybe eight pounds of food here, and I uh, put them into these small Ziploc bags. Oh, you can't see that. These small Ziploc bags and I freeze them flat so that either one or, or half of one of these uh, is, is the amount of food I need for two weeks. So then I just throw it in and add any other ingredients that I want and the preservatives and I'm good to go. One thing to keep in mind uh, when you're using this type of food, you can see that I have a lot of seaweed in this and that's because I have a lot of herbivores in my tank. And to keep them healthy, uh, I use uh, phosphate-rich foods like seaweed. Uh, but one of the problems with that is that uh, you can push your phosphate nitrate ratio quickly out of balance with this. Uh, I already had a problem with this uh, before I started uh, dosing my own food, and now I have an even bigger problem with it uh, to the point where I've finally broken down and I'm going to start uh, dosing uh, nitrates to my tank to try to even things out a little bit better. So it's not just the seaweed, but you also kind of everything that you put in is higher in phosphates uh, than the more expensive reef specific equivalent. You can use the more expensive version, but like I spend uh, a buck fifty on baby shrimp instead of twenty dollars on myasis shrimp. Myasis shrimp have about the tenth the phosphate of, of baby shrimp. So you know, uh, some cost savings, but you also uh, get higher phosphate levels. All right, so the last thing that you want to do is you want to take the bag and smack it on your countertop. And uh, this will kind of drive some of the air out. Then get the rest of the air out, close up the bag. And then take the food and smush it flat. And that way not only will it freeze faster, but when you go to thaw it, uh, you won't have to wait as long for it to thaw. All right, so we have six bags of food here. Uh, made them about half an inch thick. And uh, they're ready to go in the freezer, so next we're going to be mixing it up and putting some preservatives in it. So the next step is adding preservatives to the food. 
This is the most important step in making this food because unpreserved fish food will go bad in less than a week depending on the starting ingredients and the temperature it's kept at. I'm sure you know this, but if, if you've ever left uh, frozen food out overnight, it is gross by the next morning. So the preservatives that we have here have been carefully chosen with the help of several uh, university faculty with degrees in food science. I wasn't able to figure this one out on my own, uh, but even for them, this was a little bit out of their wheelhouse. So the amounts we're going to use are on the safe uh, but high usage levels for human consumption, and I figure that's about uh, the same for a reef tank. So the recipe that I'm going to show you here is just a baseline. I've tested the version uh, that is in this tutorial uh, for three months, and I still had edible food after three months, although I suspect most of the nutritional value was gone by that point. But uh, we can reduce uh, the amount of preservative if we don't want the food or don't need the food to last that long. But the four preservatives that we are going to use are citric acid, uh, ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, sorbic acid, and calcium propionate. So the largest additives, which are citric acid and ascorbic acid, are both used in reef tanks in much higher quantities than we are talking about here and are both reef safe. The other two additives are both used in commercial products and I believe they are reef safe at the levels that we are using. I haven't seen any negative side effects from using them. Even so, these are mold, yeast, and fungi inhibitors and they're not needed that badly unless you want to keep food for a month or more. So I've actually cut the additions that I'm going to quote you here in half and I may reduce them even further as uh, my container size means that I can only really hold about two weeks of food. So if you want to better understand uh, why we're using uh, what we're, we are using, I can point you towards some resources, you just have to ask. So the citric acid is going to be what we use to prevent bacterial growth. We're going to add this in at a ratio of 0.5% uh, by weight, that's 0.5%, so multiply whatever weight you have by 0 0.005 to get the weight of uh, your citric acid. And this is going to acidify your food. And most of the bacteria that we are worried about do not reproduce under a pH of about 4.5. And it also acts as an antioxidant. Uh, the next is uh, the vitamin C or ascorbic acid and this provides stability to the food so it's, it holds its nutritional value for longer and we're also adding this in in 0.5 uh, percent. I use these pills just because of then I don't have to weigh it out uh, and it's actually very cheap and easily gotten from uh, you know any store that sells vitamins. Calcium propionate is a mold inhibitor and I was initially using this at 0.1% uh, but I've since cut it in half. Sorbic acid is a mold, yeast, and fungi inhibitor, and it is also being used at 0.1%, but I've also cut that in half. So what I've got here is about eight cups of fresh salt water, and I use salt water because it lowers the freezing temperature so I can keep my refrigerator at a lower temperature. And uh, I'm going to add about 10 grams of citric acid and then I'm going to take 10 hundred or thousand milligram pills and I'm going to grind them up. Uh, that's 10. I'm just going to grind them up in a mortar and pestle. and add that in, and then I've pre-measured out uh, two one milligram uh, samples of the other two preservatives, and I will add those in. So I've turned on the stir plate, I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit just to get it going. 
I usually let this sit for a couple minutes to get all of the uh, preservative compounds dissolved, some of which don't really like to dissolve in water very quickly. All right, I grabbed my better stir plate. That one's on the fritz. Uh, so it's stirring away. So then you just need to put in your frozen food and let that stir up and homogenize. And once that's done, it's ready to put in the refrigerator. So it's at this point that I add in all my dried foods. Uh, so I'm gonna add in, I just picked out a random assortment of stuff, some coral frenzy pellets. And whoop, that's a bit much. Eh. And some uh, New Life Spectrum pellets. Uh, my fish seem to like these. And then some uh, micro food. So this is uh, some zooplankton and phytoplankton that's been freeze dried, reef chili. And, and I also tend to add in just a little bit of spirulina flour. because uh, it's, it's good for good for fish health, particularly uh, herbivores. So that's about all I put in, and I mix it up. And at that point, we're done. So that's it for automatic refrigerated food dosing. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, uh, suggestions for DIY ideas, please put them in the comments down below. And thanks for watching, guys.